Hello, today's video will be about the Expander Survey Kit. So uh, let's have a look and see what we've got. So we've got the uh, case here with the kit inside. So in here you get the survey kit. Um, this is the surveying unit. That's the surveyor device. This is the surveyor unit. So um, this bit is a bit like the um, expander interface. So you place this bit wherever you were going to put your expander interface or wherever you plan to put it. Um, it comes with a charger, a charger there, and it's got obviously uh, rechargeable batteries inside. Switch it on, uh, light comes on, gives you a, a readout on the screen there. Um, shows you things like background noise. Okay, okay. so uh, we'll uh, place that down for a second. And then the other part is the surveyor unit. So we can switch that on and that will marry up with the, um, the survey kit. So you can see you've got a uh, display on there. Um, every time we do a bit of surveying. Obviously it's a good signal at the minute. So uh, so that's the two parts. You also get some, uh, some poles inside here. So the poles will screw into this unit, the survey unit. You can put several poles together if you want so that you can survey uh, the ceiling quite easily, or walls for call points and the I.O. units. And obviously what's going to happen is you've got a button on the back here and every time you place the survey unit onto the wall or ceiling you start to get a, uh, a reading. So uh, let's just move this out of the way. Um, you also get a strap to carry in the case around if you want to. Um, I've used it a few times in London, other uh, sissies, taking it with me. Okay, so uh, we'll just take the pole off a sec. This pole as well will fit into the no climb uh, pole, so if you've got any really high ceilings, uh, you should be able to do those as well. Okay, so as I was saying, every time you put this up to the wall, some lights flash and you get a reading. And at 45 dBs, the dB reading is what you're looking for. Um, 45 dBs is obviously the best reading. The lowest you would want to see is 25 dBs. So anything below 25 dBs is going to give you a fail. So you'll see you'll get 45 dBs, two readings of that because there's two channels that we're looking for. It's a pass. If we get a decent um, power reading, which is the dB, then the percentage should follow. So um, the signal is the 100% bit underneath. And you also get a background noise reading as well. Um, and you get a count of how many tests you've done. So obviously you'll be moving around the building, placing this in each area where you intend to put the devices and looking for anything above 25 dBs up to 45 dBs on both channels and 100% signals, although they might not always be 100% of course. Every time you uh, you get a reading, you can put it onto a drawing or something, but you can also put it onto our survey sheet. So you see we've, we do a survey sheet, which we can send out electronically, you can fill in. So um, the items on here are um, uh, the site name, the panel that you're using, the main fire alarm panel, interface number that you're testing for, the location of the interface and then you've got each of your devices so initially on a survey 
um, you can put in um, the location of the device that you want to use maybe the type of device it is um, the approximate distance away from the interface so how many feet how many meters depending on how you measure um, and then you've got your site survey information here so there's uh, site survey percent site survey db for each channel and then you would obviously place those in the boxes underneath and you can also put your background noise uh, level in there as well now the other uh, boxes that are on here you'll probably fill in at a later time so um, you've got uh, loop address so you might put that in now but uh, probably put that in later the an analog value you would probably put in later and you get that off the main fire control panel um, and all the analog values are listed in this commissioning guide um, and you've got all these signal strength levels uh, which you can also take so um, they'll be shown on the interface information so you can fill all that in once you've uh, put the actual kit in what else have we got on here? So on the other side, we've got uh, we've got the uh, frequencies that we're using, so we can note those down. We've got the background noise level on channel one and channel two, so we can note those down. We can make notes of anything else that's going on in the building, and of course, we can get it signed off if you want a manager to sign this off. Um, there are a couple of notes on there that just talk about the um, British standards so actually site survey sheet should be kept on site and also in your records um, preferably left on site for it if you ever leave the building or leave the system so that the next person can use it this site survey information is really useful for yourselves for future companies using the system and also for us, if there should ever be a problem on the site, we would ask for this information to be included. So, um, so it's really critical um, that that information is taken. Okay, so uh, we'll move on to the uh, the next video, I think.